Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by True Digital Media Consulting. You're online right now and so are your customers, but marketing has to be a consistent journey. True Digital Media Consulting can help with your online ads, organic growth, and so much more. Contact us today at 832-934-4436 or visit our website at truedigitalmediaconsulting.com. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of The Docs. We are your home for everything health and wellness. Thank you for joining us for another amazing week as we hope to inspire you with new content on what's new, the latest and greatest in the medical world. It's your girl, Dr. Kwanzaa. I'm a board certified ER physician, a DJ known as the DJ doctor, author, speaker, and coach. Hanging out with y'all today, and I'm here with my fabulous co-host, Dr. Keisha. What's good? Hi, I'm doing wonderful. It's Dr. K, Dr. Keisha. I am your pathologist. Your informant on health and keeping very fit and mind, body, and yeah. soul completely in sync. Very fit. He, Dr. Keisha's always fit. What, what did you do this weekend? I know you worked out something. I you taught dance something. class. You did? Yes. Okay. West still, African dance class. I think I'm still class. sore from uh, the last yeah, Tuesday yeah, yeah. that uh, I came through and worked out uh, with y'all. I'm about to start something and I'm going to make an initiative and you're going to have to take part of okay. that. Okay. I'm down. Do that. I'm down. I'm Good. up here posting y'all. Thank y'all for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. How was your weekend? I heard you was out and about with your oh, hubby. Wonderful. Yeah, we tried to do a little belated. So 16 years. Congratulations. Oh, it's your anniversary? Yeah, it was. Sweet. What's On the Thursday. secret sauce? Oh, my God. What's the magic? Kids? Kids? Mm -hmm. Really? Kids, yeah. I, I hear that that's a deterrent for some people. <laughs> it doesn't always help the situation. But you said the kids, huh? Kids. I think kids. And just being actually different, because my husband and I are so different. Yeah, I think y'all are actually, different. Dr. Keisha together. be over here slinging three times, three types of cuisines and stuff for her kids and family. <laughs> he's, no, he does. He's oh, that's right. No, your husband. Your husband I do cooks? the healthy. Yeah. Okay. He's the cook. No, yeah. like amazing. Yeah, you have like, to go and invite us over yeah. for dinner. I will. It's pretty good stuff. <laughs> so this time we decided to go out to eat. And of course, you get the phone call. Yeah. What do I do with the pizza? What do I do with, can I have cookies at 1130 at night? I'm allowed to have pizza at, at your house. I know. They do. Once in a while, I do allow them to. You I do? try to do like the homemade healthy thing, you know, with the spinach. Yeah, that doesn't I fly. like it. You know what? That's yeah. like my new little favorite uh, treat, uh, trying to eat a little healthy. Oh, the, the cauliflower, cauliflower pizza? pizza? I like it. It's really See? good. Yeah, See? come through cauliflower pizza. It's good. So what's good? It's what we got good. going on today? I'm excited. We're going to get to the basics, okay. talk about a little bit of pathology. You guys are going to go to many medical school or kind of wonder, you know, if you've ever had a biopsy or something, what does it look like? Yeah. What happens with it? That's this what we're going to talk Keisha's about. This is Dr. favorite topic, and I love because she is so yeah. excited. Whenever we start uh, talking about pathology and all the inner workings of things, Dr. Uh, Keisha goes crazy. Sorry. She's going to get crunk. She's going to go crazy in here. I do. Well, something interesting happened over this last week uh, yeah. with the... Uh, the Incredible Hulk, man. The Hulk is, oh my God, like everyone Growing should remember down. the Hulk. He went down. Lou, uh, <laughs> let's see, let me not mess up his last name. Ferrigno, Lou yeah. Ferrigno. So he is the Hulk uh, who, who's, you know, he's advanced in his age, you know, over 65. Uh, went out and had a flu shot, and he had a, a bit well, I think of it was a, the, the flu, the I'm pneumo. sorry, the, yeah, the pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia vaccine, and had a little trouble, developed some fluid in between the muscle there, um, and apparently was hospitalized for that. Yeah. So pretty, which is kind of interesting that this is national news attention worthy, but you know it can happen sometimes if you're getting a shot. 
uh, one thing that can happen in some people if uh, the administration is not correct or there's an inflammatory response is that there is some fluid that can develop sometimes between the, the soft tissue and the muscle. So the soft tissue would just be that outer layer of tissue between the skin and the bone. But he developed a little uh, fluid in his uh, bicep uh in his bicep muscle, I believe, yeah. and uh, ended up having to be hospitalized pretty, for it. He's still pretty muscular. Yeah, look, he's look a big dude. Picture. He's like a huge dude. He's still looking pretty hulkish, I would say. Yeah, look, yeah, look at him. That's a big guy. <laughs> but uh, no I think you don't uh, need a hospital gown on. But I think one important thing that we wanted to highlight is still very important to get your vaccinations. Yes, do there not, some, this should not deter you. Correct. Right? There's some incorrect information, uh, of course, on the internet. You know, people always have a little side comment here and there, but still need to get your vaccines. You know, we I don't know, you know, why this happened to him 100 percent, but it could have been administration related or it could have been related just to an inflammatory response um, just under the surface of the skin. But still super important to get your uh, pneumonia vaccine and all your recommended vaccines for the year to prevent, you know, devastating illness, sepsis and uh, other complications that can come during the flu and winter season. True. So I guess it's um, those who are immunocompromised, Correct. right, or got something else going on right. and then over. 65. Yes, and, the, get that and then uh, our little ones there, our little babies. our babies there. You want to make sure you uh, get those immunizations because once again, we're going to say it, you have to get your immunizations done. It's been scientifically proven that the study uh, showing that autism was linked to uh, vac vaccines is, is untrue. And actually, didn't that guy go to jail? I think so. I think he went to jail actually for uh, sort of basically falsifying this research and getting millions of dollars uh, to support that. But that's a whole separate topic. Actually, we could do a whole show on yeah. that, truth be told. Check your research. But seriously. do your research and make yeah. sure you get your vaccine. check again. where you get your research from. <clears throat> and check where you get your research from. And don't forget, um, as the holiday season approaches and this uh, flu and winter season approaches, make sure you're taking care of yourself, staying hydrated, getting plenty of rest, and watching uh, your cold and cough symptoms. Make sure you have some Motrin and Tylenol on deck in case the little ones have a fever. Um, and get ready because it's about to get geared up as it gets colder. Yep, very true. Yep, true. so we're seeing a lot of it uh, over in the ER. So, uh, But we're ready for you. We're happy to see you anytime. But uh, what you got What you got up, Keish? Oh, good. I'm excited. Okay, you guys, we are going to talk a little bit about pathology. And just a little breakdown. Um, I'm a pathologist. I went to medical school. I did what the general doctors do. However, I happen to be one of those behind the scenes physicians. If you ever get your blood taken, if you ever happen to get a biopsy or have a loved one that has cancer and had to have surgery, that stuff comes to us. We look at it, we diagnose it, and then your physician kind of decides or guides the treatment based on what we say. So I just wanted to have a little bit of, show a little bit of pictures. Some yeah, cool let's stuff. do it. Okay. So first one, kind of on the holidays. A lot of you guys may be eating things you shouldn't be eating or eating. Why you got to start off judgy, Dr. Right? Keisha? I mean, we all want our macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Don't be hating on, In moderation, hating on the right? holiday. <laughs> the but holiday if you happen to get a little bit of, oh, heartburn, which, you know, yeah, the term buddy. heartburn. Or get a little bit of something that's burning up in your throat. Right. Reflux. So I want to show you some pictures. So you end up going to the gastroenterologist, and they do something called a scope. Now, this is actually a resection, which means that this person has surgery, or it could actually be an autopsy. But this is the normal esophagus. The thing on the left that looks like wide and stringy, yes. that's the esophagus. And that's actually the normal color of the esophagus. That's and like then smooth I'll, muscle tissue, right? Right. It, the, underneath it. Mm -hmm. It's lined with the layering like your skin. So it's mm -hmm. a squamous, but it's not, it doesn't have like the little keratin that we have on top. And then the thing on the right, that's your stomach. It's mm -hmm. all, it's got the little folds in it. What's different yeah. about like the esophagus and inner structures versus like tissue, like the skin, if you had to break it down for people, like what would be the difference between uh, our skin that's like on the surface versus... Uh, like the skin's in the esophagus. Like so look at the next that? picture. So the next picture, um, the next link, that's what it looks like in the scope when he's looking down. That's, that's cool. a normal esophagus, yeah. That's a, actually that's a very a, pretty esophagus. Yeah. <laughs> nice and pink, one. looks That's healthy. how it should be. Yeah. So in the next picture, um, it's that second little link, you'll see that the lining, the thing is they're squamous. So I'll just, general terms, let's say okay. squamous, um, and then there's glandular. So on the left, that's what the normal esophagus looks like. If it was skin, there would be 
a uh, little compact like the keratin like mm -hmm. your feet are really really kind of tough right that's the keratin layer the more keratin you have the more tough it is but inside organs shouldn't have that on top right if they have they've been exposed to something like if there's a lot of acid, you probably will get that lining on the top. Correct. And then underneath, we don't, they don't have, there's no hair glands and all the things you see right. in skin. Right. So that's what makes it. And the muscle at the bottom, that's the muscle that allows the food, the skeletal, the muscle that allows the food to be pushed down. Got you. So well, interesting like thing. So as we relate the esophagus and uh, reflux to our holiday food, that mm -hmm. may present, uh, so for a lot of patients, it may present as a discomfort in your chest area. And so sometimes it can mimic chest pain. Right. It's an atypical form of chest pain. But if you have high blood pressure or diabetes or other risk factors for coronary disease, sometimes it can mimic and it can be a little hard to differentiate. So you have to know from your risk factors from, from, from uh, disease, chest yeah. pain related to coronary disease. So uh, when you're eating all your, uh, your stuff that may not be on your dietary restrictions this year, just remember <laughs> to keep that in mind. But if you have uh, chest pain or chest discomfort, you want to get that evaluated immediately. But I know we got to hear from some of our amazing yeah. sponsors. Yes. yes, and then we'll show you a little bit more what it actually looks like with reflux. Okay, bet. So this episode is sponsored by True Digital, everyone. If you're online right now, your customers are too. So please, the question is, how do you actively reach them? Marketing has to be a consistent journey, and we are here to walk you every step of the way. True Digital Media Consulting can help you with website development, online ads, your business reputation, and organic development and growth on search engines. So give us a call today to discuss your strategy for your business at 832-934-4436 or send us an email at truedigitalmediaconsulting.com. Mention SPEAR to receive a free 30-minute strategy consultation. Do that. Nice. Love, love right. True Digital. But yeah, we see a lot. So we see a lot of heartburn. You see a lot? I think I had it for the first time uh, when I went to Xavier, it I hurts, think I had right? some, I, yeah, I had some uh, turkey necks for the first time oh. and found myself identifying with <laughs> some atypical chest pain. It burned. Lord, it, it burns. burns. And it uh, sometimes it can produce a metallic taste in the mouth. So mm -hmm. that can be one differentiator. And then also a lot of people experience symptoms at night or they'll wake up in the morning with discomfort um, and a lot of burning or pain in their in their chest from chronic reflux. So definitely wow. want to get that checked out. Do so the third picture down there will show what the reflux looks like. It's one thing. Um, so with reflux, there's going to be burning. So this is the same thing as scope. You're getting scoped by the GI doctor. They'll see down wow. here a little redness. Okay, and what happens in Barrett's? which is over time, if you get so much acid exposure, yeah. that pretty lining you saw, the squamous lining that the esophagus should be, ends up turning to a glandular lining and looking more like the stomach. And it shouldn't look like that. So that's Some, not as pretty and pink as it was before. Not as pretty and, almost, right? It should be smooth, mm -hmm. like Salmon, very smooth right. appearing mm -hmm. and almost have like a, uh, does all smooth muscle like that or smooth muscle structures have that kind of... So that's the Blades. mucosa causing, yeah, causing the mucosa, that. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It should normally be like smooth for the esophagus. Right. That's when you look at, on yeah. the inside. So yeah. now that it's churning a color, so the salmon color is the normal, the pinkish color, the reddest is the change, and the Barrett's. So the next picture will show you what actually happens. So once you get Barrett's, it's kind of like precancerous, basically. So the next picture, the fourth one, I think, down, will show... Um, there you go. Now you're getting, now you see the difference? On the right, that's what we're supposed to see, that squamous. Now it's changed to like glands. So when I'm looking under the microscope, that we're looking for that. And if it starts to get dysplastic, which means precancerous or atypical, mm -hmm. we have to grade that so that the clinician knows that they need what they need to look for or if they have to do another even more invasive step. So before you develop bear, like how long does that take to develop? Like a Barrett's esophagus from chronic So reflux. it's slowly over time, right? Yeah. Months or something like that. But the problem is a lot of people, you know, just take medicine and don't realize, okay, I need to get it looked at. Right. Because the GI doctor can look at it and what every, you know, a couple of months or so can keep going in and biopsying to see where you've progressed. Right. Because it's, once you yeah. get Barrett's, you have to be followed up because it can become dysplastic and then cancer, which so the gotta, last picture will yeah. show the cancer. And you got to go see your doctors. Y'all. You got to go see your primary care doctor so you can get a, get a recommendation to a gastroenterologist. And even from yeah. the emergency department, we don't get... Uh, 
great ability to um, follow this up for you. So you want to make sure you see your doctor, and uh, Dr. Keisha has the next slide on what can happen if you let that go yes, too long. Yes, if you let it go too long, that big thing is almost like an it's ulcerated, and it's a mass, and what will happen if you scroll down, they'll biopsy it. And when they biopsy it, that's what it looks like, endos the endoscope. When they biopsy it, it'll look like cancer. Yeah. Um, I may not have a picture of the actual cells, but... Yeah, it's basically the same thing as the glands, but now it's haphazard and just mm -hmm. does not look pretty. So then we grade the cancer. We also grade the, there's layers of the esophagus. We grade how deep or try to see how right. deep the cancer is going because that's important. Whether it can be resected or if they, you know, or it's unresectable. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I think most that's people cool. don't, uh, don't ever get a chance to see that in real life right. and see what that looks like from the inside. So that's super cool. Exactly. Very cool. So super the cool. next one is kind of similar you were talking about heartburn so now let's actually look at the heart the heart is a beautiful complex well, we thing. can't give up a well, up dr keisha we can't give away all our goodies all our oh, goodies you're unfortunately right. so we're uh, we gotta we gotta say goodbye to some folks right now unfortunately. facebook live please you guys if you could subscribe i ask that you do that so you can continue watching the show see all the important things that we have and give us information so subscribe on platforms like iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Review our show on iTunes and give us some constructive feedback. Let us know what you want to see, what you want to hear more of. Share this in Facebook Live post and the entire show with your family and friends. Let them know we're on so we can keep going strong and donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. Please donate at thespear.tv slash donate. And for the month of December, we have decided to help support Hungerthon initiatives to help end hunger in America and around the globe. So go to thespear.tv slash Hungerthon and donate today. All right, Facebook Live, I guess we have to say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Have a happy holidays. But we don't have to go. You can no. subscribe on iTunes right now, Google Play, Stitcher. So come holla at us every single week. Just go over to the podcast section on your apps and look for The Docs Podcast and click that subscribe link. And you can hang out with us every single week yeah. and learn something really Sounds incredible. Good. All right. Take care. Bye, Facebook. Bye. So I guess we should continue on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yes, the normal heart, right? Yeah. So one uh, another interesting thing, just along the lines of uh, things that we can see in terms of um, reflux. Again, people can associate that pain or be concerned that this is their heart. Right. So we've kind of discussed how uh, esophageal reflux can sort of mimic coronary disease. And so Dr. Keisha has some amazing slides, um, uh, pathology and anatomic slides about the heart. Um, right. And so we can give you a better better look at what's going on on the inside with the good old ticker. Good old ticker. Uh, you know, the thing I like is like, I'm the type of person um, I was born in the show me state of Missouri. So I like to see to believe the show me state. I've never show, heard that. Missouri is a show me state. What does that even mean? You have to show me. Show me prove to believe it. To me. it. Yeah. Okay. Show All me right. to believe like it. Like so that. that's why as a pathologist, I have to see it and believe it. That's I, right. You know, so everything I see makes sense. So as a pathologist, the heart is very complex. You can see this picture of the beautiful normal heart. Um, Man, that's awesome. Clearly a uh, And that's a good-looking heart? Or yeah, that's a good-looking heart. That's a good-looking heart. heart. So there's a little bit of adipose on the heart, right? Okay. Um, the top, you can see the aorta and the vessels coming off. Um, let me show you the next picture. And then you also see the arteries. Um, I don't have, like, a, it's hard to see, but the more indentations, that's where the arteries are lying. Um, and normally, they should not be clogged. And you can see they're supplying, the main arteries are supplying and perfusing the heart. So if you're getting blockage, you're not right. eating right, or you even have, um, you're predispo predisposed to uh, some of the atherosclerosis or something like that, some of the genetic diseases. Yeah, so that yellow stuff is, some, it's all them hamburgers yeah. and, uh, and all that, that fatty, fast greasy food. stuff yep. that's no good for you. And that Dr. Keisha will say, bad, bad girl. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad guy. So the normal <laughs> arteries, too. This is kind of cool. So I'll show you. This is under the microscope. So you see how open and wide it is? It's like a road. There yep. can't be congestion. Once you start to pack on lipids and fat through atherosclerosis, it's not perfusing. Blood is not, is getting, is not getting through. It's not perfusing the heart. And so that's where you end up getting what you call an MI or heart attack. Right. And what we see are infarcts. Correct. And I'll show you on the next picture what that looks like.
And so in clinical terms, if someone someone were to come in with a myocardial infarction, usually we see the presentation as left-sided chest pain that's described as pressure, squeezing, or tightness that can radiate to the neck, the left arm, or even the back. Um, It it can also present in other uh, fashions, but that's the most classical presentation. And then we tend to really get concerned when we see things like sweating or low blood pressure associated with that. And it's more of a diagnostic and or clinical indicator, I should say, that there's something more severe going on, especially if you have risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes, family history of heart disease, if you're a smoker, or if you have a primary uh, relative like a mother or father who has heart disease. Those would all be indicators um, that you're at risk for uh, uh, coronary disease right and so you guys are checking lab work right you get they're getting the blood drawn they're checking you may hear troponin or you may hear ck or certain levels Correct. and these are things that are produced from this muscle in the heart and i'll show you on the next picture what the infarct looks like um so this is like it's been sliced yeah, okay drastically so different. you can tell the difference that little white almost like a geographic area that's white and then around it is red that's an infarct Okay, it's like yellow tan, and then around it is red. So the remaining heart tissue around it is a reddish brown. Now, the heart is something that this area is dead, right? So it's not going to regrow. What happens is it builds with scar tissue, and that scar tissue stays. So your heart is also electrical. So if you're trying to get an electrical impulse through, it can't get there. So it can affect the pumping of the heart. Correct. And that's actually, uh, this picture actually represents the left ventricular wall, which is very important for your cardiac output and uh, maintaining your heart's ability for forward output. And so once you have a heart attack there, you may have more just generalized weakness, fatigue, less ability to uh, do many activities because your heart can't really pump as fast because of the scar tissue. You can't get good perfusion or good uh, electrical conduction through that scar tissue. And clinically, it can present in some different ways like shortness of breath and uh, a lot of fatigue with activity. So although we're showing these slides, like we we can tell you clinically, based on what we're seeing, um, how that may play out in your life on an everyday basis after that's occurred. Right. So super important to take care of. You. Very important. And you'll hear people talk about, you know, they have to have a bypass or they had blocked arteries. So the last picture will show you what the artery actually looks like when it's blocked. So you remember seeing the clear picture. So here is an artery. And if you look that little circle and you see like jelly looking stuff, that's a clot. So it's completely. So if you have a thrombosis or we call it thrombus, something blocking the um, artery, nothing's getting through. So sometimes these are like literally onset chest pain. Um, and then you can. Hmm. So that little scab right there is the actual thrombus. So it's like, like a circle like this. Mm-hmm. And then it's sitting in the. Yeah. Yep. And it's sitting all the way. And it could be a large. I mean, I've seen people that have, I've seen clots that literally when we open the artery, it's going all the way. That's crazy. Post-mortem. Makes me want to go mm-hmm. to the gym right now and eat a salad. So you see, this stuff is gradual. So that's why I really recommend a lifestyle that fits with you and is doable. So not doing something crazy. But let's do another ad so we can get on the show. Man, this is like super cool. This is like taking you back to anatomy and physiology. (laughs) So I love Dr. Keisha. So, but more importantly, we love our sponsors here at The Sphere. So are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you need... Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. Big shout out and much love to the Sphere Network. We love you. Great. Yeah. Because I'm glad to be able to kind of talk about this stuff. Yeah, and this is awesome. In a basic, basic way. So we got the holidays, right? We got to protect our heart. Yeah. And we may be having some good eggnog, some wine, some heavy liqueur. Mm, not the liqueur. Right? Dr. Heath, sure you having the liqueur of the no, holiday? No, 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 no. Well, I, maybe a little sip. Mostly a little wine. eggnog, a little so, soy yeah. nog. Soy what nog. you drinking? Almond, Almond milk nog. nog. I don't really like it. 
It does, I'll I have vegetables. to admit, it, did, that, it doesn't taste good. Yeah, it it's taste not good. that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll stick to the well, non. Nutmeg's not going to hit it, huh? No. Well, grandma Can't. cinnamon's not going to fix it. Okay. Not really. All no. right. Well, it's okay. You don't need so, it. No. But I got my wine. And regardless, if you're drinking over time, the same thing. Anything you do over time, do in moderation mm-hmm. because your liver. And I'll show you a picture. Your normal liver can be affected, yes, by alcohol. So you've heard of hepatitis viral. There's also alcoholic hepatitis. This is a normal liver. That's that. Now that's a nice. Okay. Now this is so nerdy. Like, but right now I'm like, that is a good looking liver, liver, isn't it? I know. (laughs) (laughs) That liver has been taken care of. Exactly. And even eating. So the fat deposits everywhere. And what I mean by the fat is by the foods you eat. Right. It may not just be something you see on your skin or your body, but it deposits in this liver. And fatty liver can affect the function of the liver because the cells swell up with lipid. Right. It's called steatosis. And if it's completely like that, it's probably not a functioning liver or you're having high liver enzymes. Something's going on. And we actually see a lot of this. And it's actually one of the more common causes of right upper right upper side pain, your liver's in the right upper part of the abdomen or right upper quadrant, we kind of refer to it. But um, fatty liver actually can present as this kind of weird, vague pain. And one thing or one thing that we found is that it'll cause this weird sort of deep pain that Mm -hmm. people don't, you know, there really isn't a lot associated with it. Sometimes you have, you know, mildly elevated liver uh, enzymes they really don't seem to fit anything. And then we just find this inflamed looking liver on CAT scan or even ultrasound. And it typically tends to go, we'll be seeing this a lot over the holiday season as people are enjoying themselves uh, a little bit more than they would in their normal day to day. And it can be just this vague pain, um, not explained by gallstones or a kidney stone and just sort of a, a sort of just this large swollen liver. And like you said, just the, the cells swell up and then it, it causes a little uh, peritoneal irritation and causes this weird pain. So you've been eating a lot and you start getting this little funny right upper side pain. It may be that and uh, your doctor may not have a great answer for you because it may take a little bit of time to kind of flush out. Yeah. Yep. So here's a picture of the liver too. I like to look at the microscope pictures. My son, it reminds me when I first took him into my job, he looked in it and he called it the look of things. <laughs> so the microscope. That's cute. So look, yeah. So if you look in the look of things, this is what the liver looks like. Those little like pink, almost like someone has made lines or colored haphazardly. That's how the liver normally is running in little sinusoids. Mm-hmm. And then you've got areas where the vessels are coming through. So that's a normal liver. And so one thing that we can point out on this slide that, you know, sort of makes sense with the pain that can be caused by Mm -hmm. uh, fatty livers that if you look at that tissue, it looks a lot different than the tissue we saw in the esophagus. There's not really a lot of room. There's not a lot of fluid. So if you have fat cells that are, you know, inching their way in between that, those uh, uh, sinusoid, is that a word? So yeah. So what happens if you look at the picture? So you see those pink things, dots, those are actually, each one is a liver cell, but they look like it's a, it forms a plate of cells, but there should be a membrane in between each cell. So mm-hmm. each cell is like round or polygonal. The fat deposits inside the cell, the liver cell. So the liver cell swells up. And it's normally supposed to be making proteins right. and things to function for the body. So now it's full of a lot of lipid. But it's so tight. Like you can mm-hmm. see how tight those yeah. structures are. Like if you're wiggling something in between there, it's not going to be really comfortable. And right. the liver is like a dynamite for your body. So you've got to take And also bile it. too, right? Yes. So another thing is if people are having hepatitis, viral or alcoholic or something, if the, if the sinusoids are being blocked or the portal areas, mm-hmm. then what happens is you see jaundice so bile and then it builds up and you're not able to flush so you end up getting yellow eyes or things like that and that's like probably one of the most dramatic things you can see clinically you can Mm -hmm. spot it from across the room it's one of those diagnoses that you know i think as physicians we can spot it you know almost anywhere somebody who's got a bad liver they have um, a certain look uh they have a certain even smell sometimes uh it's oh. a certain sort of ketotic smell which is a, fr- a fruity sweet yeah. smell and then in some cases really severe ascites which i'm sure you're going to dip off into that in a bit but yeah liver so disease is pretty common to pick out and it seems pretty miserable pretty miserable and then what happens over time usually not so much with the alcoholic but if you end up getting cirrhosis regardless mm-hmm. so, um then you can have liver cancer and that's usually the end all. Um, it sometimes presents as one big mass, but sometimes we see multiple. So if you look at the third one, it's under the lung cancer. 
Um, I'll show you a regular picture. Oh my so gosh. So it's more, yeah, the liver's more shrunk in here, right? It's not big in that, but that big, huge yellow thing is a huge liver mass. And that's crazy to think about. I'm looking at the surface size of that mass, just so even in that cross section there. And if you think about the metabolic function of the liver, which basically handles your glucose production mm -hmm. and or, uh, metabolism, your overall just Krebs cycle, energy metabolism, the liver has such a huge uh, impact on, on every aspect of your body. So to see a mass taking up that, large of a, yeah. of a, a lot piece of, of the liver that's a lot of metabolic issues going on in the exactly. body exactly so interesting that's it. you know makes me actually think about that differently when i see that slide so you it's see very cool and then i'll show you a picture of the microscopic the last little one for the liver the um liver cells you remember they form little plates so if there's a cancer what happens is we look for and normally with hepatocellular is the plates become thicker so on the left oh, wow. is a normal, right? And then the darker, th there's almost thicker plates. It's more, what I say, hyperchromatic, but darker. On the left? On the right. Okay. The malignant. The right. Okay. Yeah. The left is the normal. And the okay. right where it's darker Got and it's more crowded, more nuclear yeah. activity going on. And this is actually, could be from hepatitis, uh, hep C. Um, some people have autoimmune liver diseases. And if they end up getting cirrhosis sometimes or towards the end stage, they can have Liver wow. cancer. But there's so many different types of liver. liver. All these, I'm showing you general. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's hundreds and hundreds of cancer, different types. Look right. totally different from everything. Some are rare. Some are seen in young people. Some are seen in elderly. Some are caused from a virus. So there's so. a lot. Yeah, you have yeah. to do that. And you have to get that biopsy, right? For right. Them to determine what is what. Right. That's yeah, but yep. one thing about the liver, when when your liver starts acting up, you're going to know pretty fast. I mean, it right. pretty much impacts everything. every metabolic cycle, uh, right. blood pressure regulation, everything. So uh, keep your le liver in good health. Keep your liver in good health, for pain sure. pain on that right upper side and you get, get it checked. Or even like for a sure. fullness um, in your right upper side. You can actually, in some people, you can actually feel uh, the liver as it starts to enlarge as it slips down below the rib margin. So mm -hmm. pretty dramatic. Right. So what is the largest organ in the body? The largest organ in the body. The colon? The skin. Oh, yeah. The duh. skin. It Dang, covers the most surface the area. area. Right. Lost that. And actually, um, the skin is the largest organ. It's the one we can see. So it's one of those things that you should be looking at all the time mm -hmm. because skin cancer can come up. Oh, yeah. We're living in like a beautiful place, but it's also one that we get a lot of exposure to the skin. Right. And people usually say melanated shouldn't worry about skin mm -hmm. cancer. Well, what happens is we have these melanocytes and they have pigment. And so the pigment kind of protects us from getting exposed or sun damage. However, right. there are some types of melanoma or skin cancers that are in areas that you can't see or not exposed to the sun. And huh. so Bob Marley actually was one that had. Yes. He had a subungual melanoma. Right. So I'll show you normal skin. I'll show you a melanoma because it's a big one. To me, it's the one that the most deadly because sometimes the little spot you see has already metastasized. It could be yeah. melanoma and it's it could be in the liver. It could have been that liver mass. Right. It's, it's in lymph nodes. It could be in a totally different organ in the body. I mean, that story about Bob Marley is actually pretty interesting. Um because he didn't want to get treated, believe yeah. it or not. Um, and that's ultimately what killed him. He actually passed out in Central Park. Um, and that's how they found the, that it had metastasized. But, you know, by then, of course, it was too late. He it thought he'd late. actually just, like, bruised his uh, Yeah, that's what happens. People think that they bruise their toe, mm -hmm. and they think it looks like just a bruise, and it's going to go away. Right. Turn to their toenail. I don't know what kind of medical advice he got. And, you know, that's one thing we talk about in medicine because, again, he was a Rastafarian. And so he had some pretty clear views. And so I wonder, you know, part of me wonders, you know, if he knew all the treatment options or what could have been done, would he yeah. have done something different? Because I know he initially knew about the, the mass um, and then, you know, just decided not to go forward mm. with getting it treated. And then it metastasized and he died, unfortunately. Very unfortunate because it is a fast growing. I think my first in medical school, my first patient that I had that I lost was this young lady who had a melanoma at 12. Okay. And um, she came back. She was just on a retreat overseas with her husband, and she was coughing. Oh, wow. Exactly. So when she was 12, it was removed. They said, you know, it was gone. It was, you know, excised. And then at 20, she came back. 
And within a few years, she died. Wow. Yeah. That's sad. Very But, fast. you know, we see that so much, you know. We see it all. I mean, unfortunately, we see it more than we would like to see. Exactly. Um, and, you know, you got to check for it. And, you know, I guess you really wouldn't think to look at, you look at your think. toe, but you got to do yeah. it. You got to do it. And the other thing we got to do is thank our amazing sponsors. So, big shout out to KOG and company for sponsoring this portion of the show. So are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and to have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at KOGPassion.com. That's KOGPassion.com. And use coupon code D-O-P-E exclamation mark for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness Apparel. Act now. Sizes are selling out fast. Go get them. Love Go KOG. Em. Love yep. KOG. Uh, so this melanoma thing, it's kind of depressing, but let me show you what it looks like. I mean, we got to know, skin, though. We got to yeah, know, right? You got to know what you're looking for. So the first picture I think she had shown before, and this is an excise. So this is what That's I a get. a pretty bad one. So let me show you. <laughs> this is what, yeah, this is what I usually, we usually see is we get an excision and they make it round. Um, they have to make sure they have very large mm -hmm. um, free margins for melanoma. But regardless, you know, they usually end up doing, you can, you have to have a wide excision. So. It could be like the first picture you saw flat and brown, or what happens is it becomes nodular, mm -hmm. like this, and multi-nodular. And that actually the bluish is some ink. So there's ink dyed. Sometimes there's a dye ink that the surgeon may have. Mm -hmm. And then the suture on the right helps us because it locates. So will say 12 o'clock. So when we cut it, we'll say, oh, you know, the tumor is closest to this margin. So they'll know which margin, which side. So if you were uh, for a clinician or a person who's like looking at the skin, let's say this was you, what about those moles would be concerning? In well, your purview, like what about the what about the characteristics of the moles, their size or the way that they? Oh, look? this is like tumor. This is melanoma. So there's no mole. What happened was this is probably okay. So there is some Somewhere. usually actually there's a mole, right? Mm -hmm. But then melanoma happens usually. There's melanoma in situ or nodular. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always necessarily happen from a mole. That those nodules are like tumor. They're multiple nodules. It's one tumor, but it's forming. It looks like multiple nodules. And I'll show you on the next picture. Why would happen? So there is like a melanoma in situ. There's a lentigo maligna, which is like someone who has what almost looks like a sunspot or something. Right. And that has formed a melanoma. And then the nodular is the deep one. That's why those nodules, that means it's going deep down. Right. And, and so you can yeah. see on this like that. So there will be a whole bunch of little nodules like that. All of that little sprinkling um, and underneath, that's all like the, the melanoma, the tumor cells. Okay. And the pink stuff underneath it, that's your, col that's your collagen elastin. And what happens with people that have sun damage, the elastin fibers kind of get broken down. Right. And sometimes they have like a, a blue appearance, and we call that solar elastosis. So that's kind of a sign of um, skin cancer sometimes is this sun-damaged skin. And so if you were a person who is listening to us right now and you're looking at your skin, so you're looking for uh, skin discoloration yeah. or, mm -hmm. um, you know, or so the borders so asymmetry. Right, right, right. Does it have clear mm -hmm. borders? Right. Is it circumscribed? Mm -hmm. um, what's the diameter? Right. All so, those things, yeah. the ABCDEs. So those are all the things you want to make sure you're checking for all over. So, right. again, like Dr. Keisha said, uh, it's not just moles, but if you just see a discoloration. And the main, I think, an easy way to think about it, you know, does it appear to be circular or not circular? And is it getting bigger over a little bit of time right. uh, And to keep your eye on it? And you can even make a little circle around it and make sure it's not getting bigger and bigger um, to sort of help you differentiate if you have a question. But the main thing is if you see anything irregular inside, like irregular in shape, because most things are kind of benign. They usually right. are very, very circular, um, and they have a real sharp border. Um, and then does the skin color look even, or does it look like, you know, kind of more shiny in some places or darker in some places? So you just want to take really careful notice of, of discolorations on your skin. Yeah, and your fingernails and toenails, especially for pigmented people, because it's harder for us, make sure you're looking under your fingernails, your toenails. Right. Because these things crop up, and it's harder to get those right. biopsied. Correct. Correct. Very cool. So I think that wraps it up. It's been Man, a wonderful that was dope. time with you. I like that. I like that. Dr. Keisha always comes with, like, the straight-up <laughs> medical knowledge, and uh, we, we love her for that. Okay. So that was very, very cool. I love looking at those slides. It was, like, 
bringing up old memories. Yeah, there. right. That's cool. Back to I love it. School. I love it. So well, we brought everyone to medical school for tonight. Yeah, I like. We need to do another med school edition. I like yes. this. It's very neat, and then it's also really cool. I think even uh, kind of gets uh, my my nerdy doctor vibes going in terms of just like thinking about the looking at the tissue and thinking right. about how it shows up in clinical medicine and how it translate over translates over to patient care. Yeah, having that connection. Mm-hmm. So important. it's pretty cool. Very nice to see. So we hope you enjoy this episode of The Docs. We really hope you'll uh, invite your friends and family to join us every single week. And you can hit us up on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and search for The Docs uh, in your podcast uh, app and hit subscribe and join us each and every week. And I'm Dr. Kwanzaa MD. You can hit me up on Facebook at Dr. Kwanzaa MD or Instagram at Dr. Underscore Kwanzaa MD. How rich girl. And I'm Dr. Keisha, your pathologist and health enthusiast. Please check me out on Facebook at Dance Health Fitness and everything else on Instagram at KDMD underscore health. And please, coming soon, askpath.net. Um, yeah. It's a little bit Tell up, not it. fully functional. Please check it out. Um, any questions that you may have, lab work, lab test, a biopsy, for you or for a loved one, you can shoot a question over on askpath.net and get an answer from a board-certified pathologist. That's awesome because I think a lot of people sometimes feel like they come out of the doctor's office not really or not getting enough time to really get their uh, test results or their lab results explained um, or their pathology results explained, um, especially if there's like a a tissue diagnosis or a cancer diagnosis. And so I think it's a really cool opportunity to um, allow a physician who just does this all day long and who has a passion for it to explain in a little bit more detail to people's comfort so it's exactly. gonna be dope thank you I'm excited for you thank you well everybody have a happy holidays and please check us back out next week bye next time.